What's up guys, my name is Soman and welcome to Butterfly Studios and in this video I'm going to share with you how I animated this ship's cutout animation using masking and track mats. So welcome to the lesson 13 of this After Effects series where you're going to learn everything you need to know about masking and track mats. And you can get the open file of this video from the link in the description so go get it from there and follow along with this lesson. And without any further delay, let's jump right into it. So first let's check out how to use track mats in After Effects. So here we have a composition inside which we have a gradient shape layer and on an adjustment layer grid effect applied on it. Now let's add a triangle shape and align it with the upper half of the composition window. Now here under track mats, here we have two pick whip options. Let's select this composition and if we pick whip the layer above, now you can see the composition is only visible in the area of the shape layer and if I move the composition, the composition is going to move but only the area that is intersecting with the shape layer is going to be visible and if I move the shape layer itself, it is going to move the area of the visibility of the composition. And here we have the option to switch the track mats. Right now, the layer above that means the shape layer is selected as an alpha mat. And if you click on it, it's going to invert the mat. That means the area that is inside the shape layer is not going to be visible and the area that is outside the shape layer is going to be visible. Now if I toggle the transparency grid, you can see it more clearly. Okay, let's undo it and let's recreate the effect from the intro animation. Let's duplicate this composition. Also, let's pick on this shape layer and name it wave. Let's get inside the composition and we're going to resize this composition. And let's select the region of interest and I'm cutting out the composition area to completely fit the entire shape layer. Then let's go to composition and crop comp to region of interest. And let's give some extra area for this triangle. And let's increase the height of this composition a little bit. Then apply wave warp effect on the shape layer. Pinning, we are going to pin it from the bottom edge. Let's increase the wave height to 80 and the wave width to around 150. And let's give the direction zero. And in case if you are getting effect like this at the edges of the composition, just increase the composition width a little bit. Okay, now we are going to select this composition and select the layer above as an alpha mat. Now let's apply an effect called hue saturation on the second composition. And let's change the master hue. Let's give it around 290. And let's increase the saturation a little bit and decrease the lightness a little bit. And now let's reposition this wave layer. And now you can see the similar cutout effect from the preview animation. Now we are going to make this animation look even more interesting. So let's start by adding some grain texture. So let's duplicate this wave layer one more time. And let's turn on the visibility of this layer. So let's move this layer down and duplicate this layer one more time. And let's move this layer a little bit. So let's select the second layer and use the layer above as an alpha mat and just invert it. Now let's pre-comp these two wave layers and apply an effect on this composition called Roughen Edges. Scale down to 10. Let's increase the border value to around 180. And now let's select this composition and use the wave layer as an alpha mat. And now you can see we have already added some nice grain texture. And we can even animate this grain texture by adding an expression on evolution, which is time multiplied by 200. That means the evolution is going to animate 200 times in a second. And if we change the blending mode of this layer to overlay, it blends with the overall scene a little better. And now we can copy this roughen edges effect and apply it on the wave layer. And we can get a similar effect on this wave as well. Of course, for this one, let's decrease it to around 40. And then we can add a little bit of drop shadow on this wave layer. So for that, if we select this background layer and add a layer style drop shadow, it's going to apply drop shadow only to the area that is intersecting with the matte layer. Under drop shadow, let's give the angle zero and increase the spread to around 16 and increase the size to around 110. 
Also, let's add a little bit of noise and let's change the blending mode to overlay. And here you have it. And in the similar process, you can animate the second wave. Now let's check out how to use masking in After Effects. So let's duplicate this composition and let's turn off the visibility of this layer for now. Now let's add a mask on this composition. So select this layer and select a shape layer. I'm selecting the ellipse tool and let's create a circle shape. Now you can see once I created the circle, it has cut out this layer itself and only the area that is inside the circle is only visible. And inside this layer, we have a property called mask. And here we have mask one. Inside mask one, we have few more options. If you click on invert, it's going to invert the mask. And now the area that is inside the circle is not visible and the rest of the area of this composition is visible. And if you move this composition, it is going to move the mask with it. Inside mask one, the first property is mask path. Now if you select mask path and double click on it, a, a bounding box is going to pop up. Now we can contract or expand the mask just like a shape layer and similar to a shape path. And if we select the mask path and select any vertex of the mask, we can actually move the mask like this similar to a shape path. And we can even adjust the mask path with the help of these Bezier handles as well. With mask feathering, we can harden or soften the edges of the mask. With mask opacity, we can decrease or increase the opacity. And with mask expansion, we can expand or contract the area of the mask. Okay, now let's add a keyframe on the mask path. And let's jump on to next 40 frame. And let's scale up this mask. At zero, we're going to scale it down. Easy is the keyframe. Go to motion graph editor, speed graph, and we're going to decrease the ease at the start and increase the ease at the end. And also let's increase the mask feathering to about 40. And let's turn on the visibility of this composition. And let's apply a huge saturation effect. And let's increase the master hue. And now you have that cutout effect. You can even add more than one mask in a single layer. So let's select this composition window and let's select a different shape. So let's select the polygon tool and let's create a triangle over here. Inside this layer, you can see mask 2 is created. And here we have few modes for the mask. Right now it's add. That means the triangle area and the circle area is added together. If we change the mode to subtract, it's going to subtract the triangle area from the circle area. If we change it to intersect, it's going to only show the area that is intersecting between these two shapes. And let's select the difference and it's going to cancel out the area that is intersecting and it's going to show the other areas that are not intersecting. So we're going to keep the mask too to subtract. And remember one thing, the arrangement between the mask matters. If we change the arrangement, it will not look the same. So, so go and experiment with it and create something unique with it. But right now we're going to keep the first mask add and the second mask subtract. Let's add a keyframe on the mask path too and scale down this triangle shape layer. And let's jump on to the next keyframe and we're going to scale it up to cover up the entire preview panel. And now we're going to copy and paste the motion graph editor from these two pair of keyframes to this keyframe with the help of is copy. So select the keyframes, click on copy and select this two pair of linear keyframes and inside the paste section, click on is. And let's offset the triangle mask path from the circle mask path. And let's add keyframes at the start and at the end to keep it in a proper loop. And now we're going to add this loop expression on mask path to loop it over time. And of course, you can find out this expression from the open files that I have provided from the link in the description. So go get it and follow along with this lesson. And now we can add a little bit of drop shadow on this mask layer as well. So for that, we can copy the layer styles from this composition. So select layer styles, control C to copy, select this composition, control V paste, and the layer styles is applied with the drop shadow. And if you want to apply a mask on a shape layer, first select the shape layer and select the shape tool with which you want to create the shape. So I'm picking the pen tool and then you have to switch this on, which tells tool creates mask. This one is selected that that is 
tool creates shape so we have to select this one and if we create a shape on the shape layer it's going to create a mask and now let's check out what a luma and luma inverted mat here we have a gradient circle and here we have the background layer let's select the layer above as an alpha mat now it is switched to alpha mat if you click on it one more time it's going to convert it into a luma mat now what luma mat does is it takes the information of the brightness and the darkness values of that particular shape layer or the layer you are using as a mat so for this mat this area is bright and this area is dark so the brighter side gets more information and the darker side gets less information and due to this reason this area is more visible and the visibility is decreasing over time and here the opacity is zero and if we click on this button it's going to invert the mat that means the complete composition is going to be visible but the brighter area of the values are not going to be visible and the darker area would be little bit visible just opposite to a luma mat and if we apply a curve effect on this shape layer and vary the brightness values you can see how the luma mat is affecting this entire composition all right so that is it for this video i hope you liked it if you liked the video then make sure to hit the like button if you have any doubt regarding the techniques then make sure to comment down below i would be happy to help you out and if you're here for the first time then make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates until then goodbye